Welcome to the Filtration and Separation IIoT and Remote O&M webinar this morning. The uh, opportunities are certainly substantial to uh, take advantage of this if you're in the uh, filtration and separation business. But if uh, you're supplying software and IIoT services, uh, it's equally opportune. and uh, we had a number of people uh, signed up for this uh, conference uh, today, and hopefully some of them will be uh, showing up as we move forward. The uh, filtration and separation involves many variables. Uh, the applications are substantial, and the uh, opportunity certainly is uh, near term as well as uh, longer term. So sales of filtration and separation equipment and consumables will exceed 95 billion in 2026. And here's the way it all, uh, all breaks down. So let's move on to the next slide here. And at that point in time in 2026, the total market will be $95 billion uh, for all your filtration and separation uh, worldwide. Now the traditional route to market will be 75 billion, and we're identifying a new route to market, third-party uh, purchasers and specifiers that aren't in the business right now because of II, uh, because of the remote monitoring, that'll be adding, uh, uh, or not adding, but diverting 10 billion dollars uh, of revenues. But then uh, the filter uh, manufacturers themselves are going to make their uh, products uh, smarter and the smart revenues that they will get by uh, adding sensors and other things to their products are going to add another 10, 10 billion. So the uh, total uh, will then therefore be 95 billion, but a substantial part of it, 20 billion, will be impacted one way or another by IIoT. So there's already a substantial market in certain industries like oil and gas, pulp and paper, and food processing. But the market as a whole is going to be growing at 13% a year. So what it's going to do with all these smart sensors and so forth is generate an avalanche of white papers that uh, are really going to justify uh, an additional large number of very uh, niche experts, each able to uh, focus on his little niche. There, it is also going to dictate the interconnection between individuals at each plant within the organization operating the filtration and separation systems. It's going to dictate interconnection between the end users, associations, and suppliers to an extent commensurate with the increase in available knowledge. Part of this will occur through acquisition. Suez is purchasing GE Water. It has a remote monitoring center in France already. It owns and operates municipal water and wastewater plants throughout the world. It is operating 40% of the municipal wastewater uh, plants in Chile. So it can monitor centrifuge performance and add GE Betts chemicals and improve the dewatering from immense numbers of uh, of systems around the world. Some industries are lighting the way for others. Andritz Automation has created fiber vision and can remotely measure particle size of the fibers in the pulp and paper, and, uh, pulp and paper industry. And uh, so this really is a guidance, I think, for other industries to have this level of detail with remote uh, monitoring. Many suppliers are moving to smart uh, products. Uh, the centrifuge manufacturers are particularly active in this area. And GE has a WeWatch. Centresis has uh, uh, monitors, monitoring capabilities that, uh, that monitor 34, uh, 32 um, parameters continuously. And Alpha Laval has its Octopus uh, system. A man in Hummel has a whole new I IoT laboratory in Singapore, where it has 10 projects in the pipeline, and Donaldson remotely monitors bulk filtration for fuel. Uh, Restaurant Trek Technologies monitors uh, fryer health at its restaurants and uh, can inform a, a restaurant uh, 
uh, when they need to change uh, their filters. So AquaClear monitors RO and nanofilter systems for its industrial and commercial customers. And Avoqua, with its Wallace and Tiernan division, has extensive process monitoring systems with intelligent visualization. We're not going to get into the gas turbine filter area today, uh, even though it's relevant, because uh, we have covered that just a week or two ago with our gas uh, turbine uh, activities. But uh, this is an important area, and people like AAF have remote monitoring with a maintenance package that uh, includes inventory management. So this comprehensive approach to providing the lowest cost of ownership can be very profitable for the filter suppliers that certainly the ones that adopt this IIoT and remote uh, monitoring approach. So there are some power generation companies who are operating hundreds of gas turbines. One company with a large number of gas turbines is BHE Energy. And McIlvain has created a beta site to demonstrate the value of IIOW to empower IIoT. So BHE has coal-fired plants and wind turbines uh, around the world, around the U.S., and a few around the world. And it would uh, have thousands of lubrication systems. So you can be monitoring each one of those. And in fact, a new kidney-shaped filter at one of their plants has provided um, a superior uh, uh, performance in a pulverizer application that was having problems. So that kind of information needs to be input into the system. And one one type of uh, condensate filter was not doing well and was replaced with another one, and yet the other plants uh, were unaware of it and are still specifying the other other type of filter. So this is the type of thing that the wisdom needs to add to the IIoT, the things. I'm not going to go into too much detail on all the different markets, but we had tried to classify in the filtration and separation, you know, what are the really big applications and what are the medium, high, medium, low, and small. So we talked about Suez uh, and the dominance that they could have in this industry, and particularly with the, since they already have this remote uh, center and they're buying all these different companies, and particularly with GE Water. Uh, they own Degramont, and uh, so they have degasification, clarification, filtration, EDI, and so forth, in addition to all the GE water uh, companies now. And, of course, it does have this um, a remote monitoring uh, center. And so the center guarantees the performance of all the infrastructures and provides reliable and up-to-date information for local authorities, water operators, et cetera. And so they also monitor leaks, meter failure, falling pressure, et cetera, for the whole uh, service lines. Andritz is active in this area in a number of different industries, but particularly in the pulp and paper industry, where they, contr they control and measure crucial parameters and key pulping processes. And when you think of a pulping process, it is a filtration process. So uh, I think they are, as I say, leading the way in some some aspects here. So reducing energy consumption and, and uh, minimizing equipment wear and all these different things. And so they have what they call fiber vision, and they're measuring the uh, the uh, pulp particle size and other things that. Uh, and viscosity of the slurries and quantities of flurries, slurries and so forth throughout the process here. And with remote monitoring, they can measure a number of different uh, parameters and uh, therefore do probably a better job of remote monitoring than, than they can if they were on the site. So sedimentation and centrifugation were splitting out from filtration from analysis purposes and talked about these centrifuge suppliers that have uh, expanded their services to include even in the case of GEA has SAP and a software as, as part of predictive maintenance and service programs for food processors. And they have uh, modular service uh, level agreements, warded availabilities, 
and even insurance for customers. So their I.O. program provides remote operation of separators on merchant ships and ferries. Performance on oil purification and water treatment is optimized. The operation is seamlessly integrated into the central digital control system for the ship. GEA is pointing to a future of autonomous, autonomously operated ships. The elimination of the crew reduces operating costs by 20%. The first prototypes of already successfully completed test runs, a team of operators remotely monitors operations and if necessary can take control. So that's kind of mind boggling, but I think that you can envision plants without anybody in them as well. And the uh, we in our webinar last week, we were uh, talking about oil and gas and uh, remote uh, uh, gas operations, uh, gas, gas treatment operations where the uh, valves are being remotely on, operated and, and monitored uh, without anybody uh, on the site in a fairly complex uh, uh, process system. This uh, part of the filtration and separation, which we call sedimentation and centrifugation, is about a $14 billion business, of which remote um, service and monitoring could be $3 billion by uh, 2026. The Various players such as Andritz are providing predictive control algorithms and operating these uh, complex uh, thickening and clarifying uh, systems remotely. And there are all sorts of variables that need to be controlled. And with their brainwave program, they're doing the same thing with flotation control. GEA uh, has their We Watch, which we mentioned earlier, and the uh, try to make it user friendly. And they have uh, a specialist from GE that are available for uh, assistance on a continuing uh, basis. The way we envision it, uh, the, the the cloud. Uh, will make available even to component suppliers and instrument suppliers um, the d d data that's being collected. So somebody like Drexel Brook, who makes a sludge blanket level monitor that keeps track of effluent quality um, from clarifiers and thickeners, they will be receiving the cloud data from the plant as well. And if the others can't solve a problem that's particularly uh, unique to the Drexel, Drexel, Burke, uh, Drexel Brook level of expertise, then the Drexel Brook people can jump into the conversation. So, so mainly they would be a peripheral advisor, but they would have the capability to be um, interviewed by the people running the operation remotely if it involves a piece of their instrumentation. So the way we envision it, there can be hundreds of different suppliers of components and pumps and valves and things that are all participating in uh, the operation of one plant. And of course, when it gets to drives uh, like the DBS drive and so forth, you've got monitoring there for these things. Uh, Centresis uh, remote monitoring uh, system um, is built so that the Centresis team can log in and make non-critical adjustments to optimize uh, the process. The Octopus uh, biosolids dewatering uh, system from Alpha Laval is custom designed to monitor, control, and optimize all the aspects of the dewatering process from material feed, polymer dosing, internal decanter settings, and provides real-time information on each process step. Infrared sensors analyze performance and automatically make necessary adjustments. Now, liquid filters uh, span a huge uh, range of industries. 
But Man and Hubble has launched its first global Internet of Things laboratory in Singapore. And it will research and develop commercial, industrial, and automotive air filters using smart technologies. And there are already uh, filters out there that are being monitored uh, remotely. And they have uh, work on over 10 projects underway with another 30 uh, in the pipeline. So that is a growing operation there. Donaldson is remotely uh, monitoring the bulk filtration systems. So if you've got um, bulk fuel for your engines, et cetera, you can get the uh, software from Donaldson to, to monitor the uh, health of the filtration itself. And of course, from others, you can monitor the rest of the fuel. And just on, in a parallel area, when you get uh, uh, some of the chemicals that are used in along with filtration and separation, like the ure urea, which is used in NOx control. A company like Yara actually has remote operations where they uh, monitor the level of urea in the feed system, and then they adjust the inventory and, and provide the urea to make sure that there's a continuous supply as well as uh, many of the other parameters in the use of that urea to convert NOx to N2. Where you've got two different filters um, and you need to switch between them, obviously if you're remotely monitoring it, you know when the optimum time is to do that switching. Uh, again, we talked about the restaurant uh, technologies where you can uh, uh, measure the health of the fryer filters. Back on this <clears throat> Berkshire Hathaway uh, activity where we're doing this for all their plants, the um, when they got, when when there is the intelligence or wisdom that they've re had to replace a certain type of filter with another filter, then that needs to be fed into the rest of the system and whoever is doing the remote continuous monitoring uh, can take advantage of this uh, uh, information. <clears throat> so I guess another way to look at that too uh, is that in, in order to innovate and put in a new type of filter, you need the wisdom. In other words, the system, no matter how good it is, it tell you uh, how badly or how poorly one of the filters is it cannot decide there's a better filter out there and how to replace the existing one with the better one. All it can do is tell you you've got a problem and uh, you need the wisdom to figure out uh, what the solution is. The same thing is on this uh, lubrication uh, activity here. And I mentioned this Berkshire Hathaway energy, but what we've tried to do is to put a beta site in with all the filtration and separation flow and treat activities at all their different 200 plants. And in order to remotely monitor and control all that, all, all those activities, you have to know a lot about those plants. And even just getting the air permits and water permits uh, with information about what is going on with each one of the components becomes very helpful in that regard. On the filter end of it, again, uh, Andritz is active with their hy hyperbaric uh, filter. And the reverse osmosis systems are pretty heavily monitored. Obviously, the ones that are in desalination can be at uh, in remote locations. And so AquaClear offers remote monitoring solutions for RO and nano filtration for real-time monitoring and control. And the uh, it, they offer it, of course, for uh, existing systems as well as as new ones. And the uh, uh, customers range from the industrial to the commercial uh, operators of these systems. The Wallace and Tiernan group uh, uh, has intelligent visualization systems along with the actual monitoring. GEA has got predictive uh, maintenance tools to use with the uh, remote uh, monitoring. 
and the uh, claims are to total uh, con cost control and budget security, maximum plant availability, optimized plant performance, and the optimum value retention of the investment. Nalco has this 24-7 uh, monitoring center, and with their 3D <clears throat> Tazar technology is monitoring the uh, performance of membrane systems at many different uh, locations. So the 3D Tazar controls anti-scalant dose, but with the added feature of being able to compensate for background uh, fluorescence. pH can also be controlled and bisulfite addition can be tied to the ORP readings to prevent accidental oxidation of the membranes. So for the companies that supply treatment chemicals, it's a whole new world out there. They've had to have service engineers uh, on site much of the time in many of these plants, and they certainly have a future where that is gonna be all done remotely. They offer a number of advantages for their system uh, in terms of uh, minimizing downtime and maximizing availability and increasing membrane life, decreasing the risk of membrane damage, and of course, uh, minimizing the chemical cost to get the job done. And they have uh, support services uh, that certainly are needed, even from training and basic water chemistry and so forth. But as the, our, you know, as, a, as the remote monitoring becomes more typical, the plant operators are gonna be uh, disappearing or those that are there may be more of an administrative role than, than having to know the RO fundamentals and some of these other things here. So U.S. Water uh, also has a program uh, that would be uh, similar, and they collect all the data and uh, and have what they call key performance indicators, and they are able to make adjustments based on their uh, key performance indicator analyses. So I think this is a, a good part of the program is that the data analytics and wisdom are all required in order to uh, take advantage of the vast amount of information that's going to be generated. And they call uh, their smart care. So that this is, I think that the trend here is toward uh, much, much more wisdom applied to the uh, these activities. So GE Insight analyzes uh, water treatment uh, problems, and uh, GE, of course, is very big all the way around on IIoT with Predix and, and the assertion that the IIoT is going to be very, very big. So they're into it from every uh, every aspect. So visualizing current conditions, diagnosing problems, alarming on events, and reporting key uh, performance indicators is all part of it. So they say that managing knowledge is paramount to a, a achieving outstanding technical and business insight. And so insight delivers a user experience focused on simplicity and efficiency. And it in it facilitates collaboration. So I think it uh, once you get all this information, you need the collaboration of the uh, people with all the wisdom. So uh, recognizing that each customer is comprised of different groups of people with different roles, responsibilities, and informational needs, and providing each of them with the right information in terms of its content, form, and frequency so that it's meaningful and actionable. Insight enables customers to choose the way they manage information with a wide range of functionality. Now we're viewing that on a much more grand pic, you know, we have a much more grand picture of that, grand perspective. And this is focused on the customer and limited suppliers, but we're seeing the whole industry. So 
that all this information that's being generated allows the filter industry to say that, you know, we can solve this problem. And if the filter life is too low here, here's the way we're going to solve that problem. And you need the interaction with what we call the niche experts in these very uh, narrow little niches. So with the engine and turbine filtration, I'm not going to get into it again because we have whole things on that. So I'm going to kind of skip through that. Go to the food processing. I just picked one industry to show how important we do think the IIoT and remote O&M will be. So the food industry is going to be growing higher than uh, GDP. So it's a good industry to be focused on. And the dependence on filtration and separation is growing for pro uh, improving product quality and quantity. New food processes are driving innovations in filtration and separation. And the world food and beverage filtration industry is several billion dollars a year, with beer and soft drinks being the highest, biggest segments, followed by dairy. So IIoT will be widely used in food and beverage processing in the future. The other interesting thing is that a number of large companies have both food filtration and IIoT activities and, and can leverage them. The industry, as you can see, uh, is we've broken out here into uh, hardware and consumables. We didn't include the, the treatment chemicals here, but we in, included replacement cartridges and uh, replacement bags and things like that. And that is a several billion dollar a year industry, again, with soft drinks being uh, 350 million and uh, beer being of equal size and so forth here. So these are uh, industries that are large enough and the end users are uh, in, in certainly empowered, if they can be empowered, they certainly have the uh, potential to save a lot of money if they can uh, institute the better operating practices through the IIoT. There are four companies that we're going to just talk about briefly, Alpha, Laval, and Andritz, which we really have already talked about, spend a little bit of time on Danaher, and then uh, about Beaton. But the... In all four of these companies, they're involved in a lot of process aspects or already into electrical in a big way. So we see these four companies being leaders, among the leaders in the, in the business anyway. Alpha Laval, we talked about uh, earlier with their Octopus and some of these other systems, but they have a range of equipment that uh, that they can apply in the food and beverage industry and in they're their active here. And of course, they're one of the leaders in the original dairy um, separators that go back to the uh, 1880s. Uh, Andritz has been a very aggressive player in all this and has uh, bought one company after another and plays a major role in food filtration as well. Danaher is, uh, talking a lot about IIoT, and they say they're going to leverage the Paul knowledge, but they already, with their diagnostics and other areas, uh, have Beckman and uh, other uh, divisions that can cooperate with Paul and proceed, uh, pursue the uh, food and beverage industry. The, uh, they, they make all these different uh, filtration products, and they're pretty heavily in the food and beverage, 185 uh, billion for their uh, life sciences group alone. And then part of the process technologies of 575 uh, million. But their food and beverage strategy involves the process control and monitoring from primary processing, product refinement, even through product packaging. So this is a uh, an opportunity that Danaher is going to be pursuing. 
and can do so with quite a bit of uh, equipment and technology. And again, the technology is important. Somebody like Paul has a wide range of technical knowledge on all the uh, hundreds and thousands of different applications. Uh, the history of uh, Paul, I might just go back a minute, is that they built the company on, if you've got a difficult filter problem, come to us, we'll run it through our laboratory and come up with a solution for you. So whether it's blood filtration or food or whatever it is, they've taken this technical approach and started maybe with a few filters in an area and build it into a whole industry. So that's the way uh, they have worked. And But of course, it gives them all this process knowledge. Eaton has a range of filtration equipment for food and beverage and is focused pretty heavily in this area with uh, media filters and backwashing filters. They, they bought one of the bigger backwash uh, self-cleaning filter companies and they supply the depth filtration sheets and depth castles and so forth. A lot of it affecting the taste and the quality of, of food rather than for uh, pollution control purposes. But they're very big in IIoT. The, uh, uh, Eaton is talking in terms of being a major player and already is, of course, in the electrical area, but uh, focusing on the digitization of, of manufacturing environment and uh, leading to uh, smarter and more efficient production. So they've got a big electrical and hydraulics uh, section. Their electrical systems is was a 1.5 billion in the last quarter and electrical products was 1.7 billion. So that's um, 12 billion, $13 billion a year just in electrical products. They are developing um, a number of components and they worked with the EPRI and, and um, are creating the breakthrough with smart and secure uh, circuit breakers. The uh, lighting activities can also be leveraged. The uh, microprocessors and intelligence that are embedded in lamps and luminaires uh, can certainly be leveraged. And uh, much maybe to the consternation of Kelly Conway uh, relative to uh, auditing the, or uh, tapping into the Trump activities. This is all out there uh, and uh, is a big potential from an industrial standpoint to put all, all this together. Eaton also has intelligent valves. The, uh, for, for, for instance, in the hydraulic uh, area, their Axis Pro servo performance proportional valves uh, are being uh, used in, uh, in, in these hydraulic power systems. And they do have the intelligent onboard diagnostics to help predict uh, maintenance issues. So they have all that in addition to the uh, food and uh, can all be leveraged for the food industry and for other industries as well. So that completes my uh, presentation. I'd be glad to take any questions if people have them. If not, I, I'm glad to uh, have had the chance to talk to you today and we'll welcome, welcome any questions that you may want to send to me. And this is Bob McElvain signing off for today.